Hi folks, initially I was going to end the series with part 4, just showing the basic maneuvers, but after re-re-recording this episode it became a bit too chunky, so I've split it into 3 or 4 bite-sized chunks. Things you can practice, and things that need practice. Today's video is covering the finer controls of your helo, what to watch out for, getting to know the anticipation you need, and one of the hardest things you can do, hovering. While a hover could be anything under 20 knots, this vid is on trying to maintain a perfect in-ground effect or IGE hover. It's tricks to control and you're close to the dirt where every rock and lamppost wants to end your mission long before you get into SAM territory. Often before takeoffs, pilot would do a hover check to see if everything worked and the helo could maintain lift, then possibly set down, taxi and take off however they needed. But learning to hover in general will be useful for most of your takeoffs, some of your landings, and just general control understanding what the helo is doing, to an extent. It's a virtual environment where I can break it down into small chunks of learning, so I'm on a custom mission with no wind or turbulence. You don't have to practice it that way, it's just a suggestion to learn its reactions one step at a time. Ultimately, you need to practice with wind as well. I've figured out which trim method works best for me. I've played around to set the minimum curves, saturation and dead zone, if any, my controls need to make these tiny pixel adjustments needed to control a hover without strain. My right control enter indicator is up for now. You can also press it twice if you want this secondary layer of controls, which I believe is mimicking the SCAS, the little green indicator, which getting onto the SCAS. As always, this is early, early access, so things might change. One change from the vids earlier in the series is the green indicator, indicating what your stability and command augmentation system, or SCAS, is doing with your controls. Occasionally, depending on wind maneuvers and time, it trims or centers a little bit weird, right? So you can see it being off or different from where my control is. Usually it's fine. If it happens that it stays completely off for what you're doing and you think it's gone weird, or maybe just as a force of habit uncommonly, you know, once in a while, you can reset the gas by holding your force trim release for three to five seconds. You should see the green indicator realign with your trimmed input. I like to do this at startup and from there it shouldn't be an issue for a while. Just note it's not meant to align with the controls every second of your flight. Don't worry about that, it's doing what it's supposed to. So before I throttle up from a cold start or hop into a hot started aircraft on the ground, I bring up the controls indicator. You might not need this later on once you know what the aircraft's doing and what you trimmed before. So let's write control enter and yes, you can press it twice to get a secondary layer of information. Write control enter to take it away again if you needed to. I make sure all my physical controls are centered and my collective is all the way down. So if you have maybe have, like me, pedals that don't automatically recenter because you rip the springs out, you know, make sure those are centered. Depending on your payload, you could move around a bit on the ground if your pedals aren't centered, even with collective fully down. Once in the mission, I'll just make 100% sure that my controls are indeed centered, uh, especially for the pedals and for the cyclic You'll note that it is slightly off in this case. I'll just move it on both axes so that it hops back to center. And you'll see slowly the SCAS is drifting back there. Now, my personal preference, I just like to hold it in for three to five seconds, the force trim release, just to make sure everything's recentered. Might not be necessary for survival for me. Now, if your mission that you're flying has got wind, Check your mission packet, maybe your kneeboard. 
Otherwise, if there's a windsock around, you can check that as well. Just note that in DCS, the windsocks sometimes show you the direction of where the wind is blowing in, but might be going at full blast, even though the wind isn't. So use it to check the direction of the wind, but not always the strength of it as it stands at the moment. Otherwise, another option is also your briefing window. Usually your left alt B is the default command, and you can see the wind at the various altitude bands. Just double check with the F10 map on your current airfield or FOP, wherever you're taking away from, taking off from, which band it will falls in and how the blended sort of direction and speed of the wind would be affecting you. You can also use the TSD itself to check, you know, how are the winds. Now, if there were wind, you'd have to bank or pitch into it. Maybe even rudder pedal away from it. It's usually easiest to do a hover check and take off into the wind if you can. Next vid, I'll show you the tailwheel and how you could do that if you had the space in the ground. But for now, just note that the wind will mess with your hover, turbulence more so, and best you know about it before you take off the parking brake and you crash into your buddies. Here's me struggling a little bit more in a 17 knot crosswind while it's a bit easier facing into the wind and I'll have to pitch forward to counter it. So you've got the basic setup done. Uh, you're ready to do a hover check. You've checked the traffic behind you. you know, there's no immediate decapitations in sight should you set off. Your parking brake is off, pushed in. Your tail wheel is locked, so it's not lit up over here. More on that in the next episode. Your collective is fully down. Now, you're in the typical situation with Hellfires and Rocket Payload. Your takeoff, or rather your hovering position, would probably be somewhere around your cyclic little bit to the left from center, slightly less down, so maybe about there. And your pedals about 30-ish percent to the left. Now you can see I'm actually yawing over just a little bit just doing that. Now I could raise the collective and I'll probably be fine and be very close to a decent harbor position with the adjustments I'm about to make. But for the pedals, I actually recommend already now training the behavior of as your collective ranges up, your up, your down, your stick goes up, your pedal inputs should be rising up on the left. And as you decrease collective, you move your pedals to the right. As you can see, I'm perfectly coordinated there. The beacon of everything you should be aspiring to uh, and no one can ever do better. <coughs> Moving on. So, that's going to be roughly what I aim for in a completely wind-free situation. I'm close to sea level. Things might be different if you've got wind, turbulence, asymmetric loads. It's going to be about compensating for it. So the trick is, you're going to be rising up very slowly. And as you do, you'll be fixing it along the way. Now you could also, for, for example, like I have now, you could trim for this starting position which you will be adapting you could trim for the starting position especially of the cyclic however there is also another school of thought and this is especially if your center of your stick has more of a dead feeling i'm not talking about a dead zone where your stick wobbles around i'm talking about you don't feel like you've got quite as much control of your stick if it's completely dead center because maybe it's got a pot like feeling and it's a bit harder to get nudge over that before you feel like you've got perfect control over its motions. So there's another point of view that you could take of have your stick trimmed for the normal perfect center and now you just have to hold in that direction and now you might feel like you've got a little more movement and control ability in that. So whether you trim it beforehand or not your choice and experience would prevail in that. Now you're going to when ready, slowly raise your collective, and as you do, slowly increase left pedal. You want to be getting light on wheels, 
which you'll see when you start adjusting it. It could be around 20% or less torque, depending on your loadout. Now is the best time to fix your harbor. As you raise collective, if you see that as you start getting light on wheels, if you see yourself yawing over, like right now I'm yawing over left, I have too much left pedal given my level of collective, I recommend you fix that immediately. In this case, my solution would be to add a bit of right pedal. And conversely, if I had too little pedal for my gear level, given level of collective, you know, I'd start yawing to the right. I would suggest you, again, fix that immediately. What can happen is, like in this example, and especially if you've got a bit of back left cyclic to go with it, what's going to happen is, at some point, your right wheel could become a little pivot point and anchor you, and what then happens is, you flip over as the pressure becomes too great, and shorten your rotor blades, possibly endangering your or gaggle of Apaches that you're taking off with. Secondly, you also want to be cancelling out any drift that you may have. So as you get wheels light, you know, say you've figured out how to maintain a stable heading. You've got the right amount of pedals. As you can see in this case, I'm drifting to the right. And yet again, this is a risk, not only for you crashing into rocks and things off on your side, but also, again, if you just got the right amount of controls and right amount of pressure, what can happen is your wheel gets stuck on something or just plants into the ground and you flip over. And again, you die faster way before some kind of SAM launcher has taken you out. Now, if you this I would correct by using the cyclic. Any drift you have, forwards, backwards, left, right, or combination thereof, which isn't just you turning, you will counter by using the cyclic. Or cyclic, depending where you're from. And then raise your collective a bit more, see if you're banking or drifting again in some form or shape. Like there I was standing still, but it's because I got full pressure on the wheels again. As soon as I raise collective, I start drifting in the opposite direction. If you find you are not getting a hold and a grip of, you know, you're still yawing, you're just not being fast enough by putting enough pedals or arresting your drift and so on. Just lower your collective. Maybe just a little bit to get weight on wheels again or all the way if you absolutely feel a need to, although you might just have to add a bit of right pedal as you do so to prevent slipping around. Just reset it. Now is the best time to get your hover right. If you rise up with a collective, arresting any turning, you know, yawing your nose over left or right with your pedals, and arresting any drift you may have, forwards, backwards, left, right, with your cyclic, then you set off in a good hover already, and it's much easier to maintain with micro movements from there on. Typically, you'll find that as you raise the collective, there's a point where you hit to five feet above ground if you've got enough lift. And then you can just leave your collective there, maybe reduce a little or raise a little if need be. And you'll find that your altitude is fine. Now, as for your wheel getting stuck and flipping over, you could think, well, you know, that's about being wheels light. You know, as soon as my wheels are no longer in contact with the ground, I'm fine, I'd be great. It's not just about getting wheels off the ground as fast as possible because if you are going in at a strong angle you're going to be flying off like a rocket man sideways into your buddy or rock or the parked car nearby inflatable jumping castle doesn't matter it's a problem rather just get your harbor as straight as vertical as possible from the start and as you get more experienced you can be faster about it you can be faster about your corrections so, I've decided my controls are fairly centered. I'm going to attempt again. Slowly raise collective. Watch for any movement. Your Apache will always just fix that more left pedal. And I'm drifting a bit forward. So I'll pull back on the cyclic. So now I can use visual markers to maintain my harbor. So I can look outside 
pick notable landmarks both near and far and keep them within the same perspective of my cockpit. And I'm going to try and get to a 5 foot hover because that's also good for your power checks, keeps you decently off the ground. And if you've got quite a bit of bank, like you can see here now, you'll see that you actually lose altitude. So the 5 feet also keeps you safe if you're going to be violent and crazy about it. So I've blown up my controls indicator so you can see what's happening there. Another factor that you can use is this HTU's indicator here. So at the moment, it's all saturated. I'm moving six knots or faster. So you see the, the acceleration cue over here, this little circle, indicating that I'm trying to head forward and to the right. That's my current motion of my airframe. And the velocity vector line is completely saturated, it's gone off. So if I went to cruise symbology, this is currently in hover symbology, so symbology switched down once, but it should start in this mode. If I went to cruise symbology, I'd see the normal line. Let me just arrest this movement. So in this case, right now, I've got two things happening. I've got too much right pedal, or too little left pedal, depending on how I see it, and I'm spinning. And you can see there that uh, acceleration cue with the velocity vector right behind it. Now, if I wanted a good hover I'm in control of, I want to be adding more left pedal, so I keep my heading. And then I also want that acceleration cue to be towards the center. The acceleration cue, the further it is from your line of sight crosshair in the middle, the faster you're moving in a direction. And the vector line would be connecting to it, more or less. So if that acceleration cue is perfectly centered in the middle of your line of sight crosshair, that means you're not moving in any given direction that the system can detect. And then the other aspect is just you check your altitude, you know, that you're maintaining 5-ish feet, and that you are not changing your heading by rotating. And yes, this is constant work. So... Maintain your altitude by changing collective if you need to. As soon as you change collective, change pedals as well. So collective up, you add left pedal. Collective down, you add right pedal. If I need to change my heading and I haven't moved my collective, it's just pedals on their own. And then otherwise, any drift sideways, you rest with your cyclic. Now, some things to note about how you control it. Say I'm drifting off in that direction. That acceleration cue is going further and further away. That means I'm accelerating. So to stop that, I need to move my cyclic in the opposite direction. So in this case, back towards me and to the right. Now, if I kept that motion in, you see there it overshoots and it goes in the opposite direction again. So I hold it and it goes there again. But that's not all. See, there's a delay in between me making control input, and these tiny pixel-like control input changes, and when the rotor blades and the rotor system reacts to that, fuselage turns in the direction, and I eventually start moving in that direction. So I need to get a sense of when I've made an input, I need to trust that that input has already happened. It will have effect in a moment. Let's call it a second, but you'll be feeling it out. It will have an effect and my position will change. Whether I head in a direction or that I'm just arresting a movement, it will have an effect. So now I'm gonna input left. And there you see it took probably just under a second, I'll probably add a timer, before it started having an input. But by extension at the moment, you can see I'm busy stirring the soup as it were you know i'm busy moving my controls around making overcorrection and overcorrection and i have to keep fixing my corrections which means this is a lot more work than it needs to be right and you'll see at the moment my acceleration cue is busy moving around the crosshair okay it's sort of circling around it and that's because say it comes to the top now i won't right now it's at the top i won't be just putting in back cyclic to fix that it's putting a bit of left pedal to arrest the spin 
I won't just be adding in back cycling to arrest that because in a second there it goes past and it goes past the front arc. I need to be putting in where that acceleration cue will be in a moment. I need to be putting in the opposite direction of that. So let me just stir it around a little, get it to move in a circle. I add in back now already. That's an almost, that's a pretty decent adjustment there. So you'll see that I added in back when it wasn't actually at the 12 o'clock position of the line of sight crosshair. Because I was anticipating where my movement would take me, and then I countered that. So a lot of your corrections are actually you also not maintaining that stick movement or that pedal perfectly as is. It's you adding it in just enough to arrest the movement in a certain direction. So say I was moving in that direction. I put in. At this case, it's not the acceleration cue isn't spinning around. I'm solidly heading in that direction. I've got a bit of yaw on me. But yeah, it's heading in that direction. So I want to stop that movement going faster and faster. So back right side click. I'm going to make it go faster towards the center. And then before it hits the center, I want to add in a bit of top forward left side click again to slow it down before it hits the center. Now, I didn't do that absolutely perfectly there, like you can see. But you get the impression. You're trying to firstly slow down the movement, have it go in the opposite direction, and then stop it again. And that often implies that maybe to arrest a movement, you add in 20% cyclic in a certain direction. And then a, a small instant later, you halve that to 10% cyclic in a specific direction. And then it winds out that you correct the momentum it has in a certain direction. And following that, you then are able to have it just go slower in, you know, towards the center of the crosshair. Now you could trim to alleviate the constant pressure that you might be holding in, but I advise you only do that once the acceleration cue is perfectly still. You know, it's not still changing course. So there are trim and I leave it. But I also advised after you trim, you instantly get ready to make corrections, like there. I couldn't just leave it in the position it was. The acceleration cue didn't stick to where it was. So while you can trim for a very good hover, expect to still make corrections once in a while. Now later in early access, we are getting a hover mode to help you maintain this. And ideally your controls are such and your curves are such that you can do it comfortably, you know, constantly just making the small adjustments as needed. If you find you're not maintaining it as well as I'm doing here, that's fine. Just practice. If you find you're doing it much more stably and that acceleration cue stays dead center all of the time, great. Absolutely keep it up. I am finding talking though and doing this is distracting. <laughs> So other signs to look for that you're about to start moving, if you find the aircraft is banking like now, you know you're about to start heading that direction, or you're about to start at least decelerating that motion and about to head in the opposite direction. And this applies generally for all of your movement. Now say you've got a very decent hover all going already. So you find that you've been able to minimize the acceleration cue it's exactly what you want. You're maintaining your heading. You're maintaining maybe five-ish feet, depending on your need. There I've trimmed and it was decent there for a second. And you're maintaining five-ish feet, so you go to Java. Now I recommend practicing with Bob Up Symbology. So it's the symbology switch down again from hover mode. And now it adds that Bob Up box, that octagon which represents in top-down vertical horizontal space, you know, where I initiated that symbology mode. So what I now want to do is I want to drag my acceleration cue towards that box, if I didn't happen to stay in it, and then slow it down as my line of sight cross here enters it. And then now I'm not only trying to ne neuter out any movements I have, I'm also now trying to make sure that I maintain within that 12 square feet octagon. 
I'm trying to get my line of sight to cross here perfectly inside it and then stay inside it, which requires me to also then align up the acceleration cue within it. So now there's, there's the added task of not only perfectly maintaining a zero movement hover, but doing it on a specific spot. So I need to move it a little bit to the bottom right. So it drags the line of sight cross here just a little towards the center of the box. If you find your motions are uncontrollable or hard to manage, do it slower. Don't try to get the acceleration cue back to the center of your line of sight reticule instantly. Don't try and get it back to the bob up box instantly. Just have it do small movements. I trim there just to relieve the pressure a little bit. Just have it do slow, small movements, get back to where you need to. With experience, you'll learn exactly when to put in how much movement to get it where you need to be as quickly as possible and then how to arrest that movement and control it on that exact spot. So just take it easy, relax, address one thing at a time if you need to, although in time you can address all the pedals collective and cyclic as needed. And this isn't one of my better days, but at the same time that's great. If you don't just see someone doing it perfectly and on the spot and you wonder why you may not be as good or you know, gloat if you're better, cool. Um, this will also help you with firing weapons. But the guy in the front doesn't have contrast lock at the moment. That he doesn't have to struggle as much keeping weapons on target. If you've got a more stable hover happening. That said, if the guy in front is in terminal guidance of a Hellfire or about to take a cannon shot, consider not making constant adjustments anymore. Just have it float very slowly in a particular direction so that they just use the LMC to keep on target. Now, after you've practiced perfect conditions, if you want to start out that way, go try it with wind from various angles on maybe asymmetric loadouts, turbulence. Try airports at different altitudes. Higher up needs more torque to get the wheels light, which means you need more left pedal, which of course means more power to the tail rotor, which means a little more left pedal, means more engine power is consumed, etc. Key is to look for signs that you're about to start moving. Anticipate the control inputs you'd have to make, let's call it a second, it's maybe a little less depending, into the future to reverse that effect if you needed to, to arrest it and or maybe drag you back to where you wish to be. And when you start getting familiar with that, you can do it faster with more drastic corrections and moves without correcting and overcorrecting and feeling like you're a jumping bean. But initially, do it slowly, do it smoothly, know which every one of your inputs is doing in contributing to the correction. If you need additional inputs, like change in collective means change in pedals, and very slowly edge it back towards where you want it to be, unless you're about to absolutely crash into something. Of course, the real secret to a perfect hover is hopping in the front seat and telling George to slow down to a perfect, perfect hover. That a boy, George. Okay, that's it for the overly much detail on something you should be feeling out. Have fun, subscribe. Next one should be out soon-ish, aka when it's ready. There's Volk, cheers.